Hi, my name is Kayla King and I'm here to briefly talk to you all about sexual assault and a tool that you can use um, if you are ever a victim of sexual assault or rape um, and you believe you've potentially been exposed to HIV. There's a tool that you can use to significantly reduce the chances of contracting the virus. Um, sexual assault and violence affects every demographic in every community, including the LGBTQ community. Um, and actually, according to the CDC, lesbian, gay, and bisexual people experience sexual violence at similar or sometimes higher rates than straight people. Um, if you are a victim of sexual assault or rape, regardless of your sexual orientation or identity and have concerns about being exposed to HIV, you can take something called PEP to significantly reduce the chances of becoming infected with HIV. So um, PEP stands for post-exposure prophylaxis. Um, it means taking antiretroviral medicines or ART after being potentially exposed to HIV to prevent becoming infected. So with PEP, it must be started within 72 hours or three days after uh, a recent possible exposure to HIV. Um, but of course, the sooner you start PEP, the better. Um, every hour counts after that 72 hour or three day time frame. PEP is no longer effective. Um, if you do take PEP, you will have to take medication every day for 28 days. Um, so if you, if again, if you are a victim of sexual assault or rape, it's important that you get to the emergency room or provider right away and talk to them about getting started on PEP. Now, there's another drug, I'm sorry, another drug called PrEP. And PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. Um, PrEP is taken by people who are at high risk of contracting HIV, and this medication is taken daily um, for an indefinite amount of time. So again, with PEP, you're taking it after a potential exposure for 28 days. PrEP is a daily medication. Um, so PrEP can stop HIV from taking hold and spreading throughout your body. When taken daily, PrEP is highly effective uh, for preventing HIV from sex or injection drug use. Um, PrEP is much less effective when it's not taken consistently. And if you are interested in taking PrEP, you should definitely speak with your healthcare provider. Um, so to explain me, to plainly explain the difference between PrEP and PEP. So PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis. I like to kind of parallel that to taking birth control. You know, you take a pill once a day, you don't have to worry about getting pregnant. You take a pill once a day with PrEP and you don't have to worry about contracting HIV. And then now with PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis, um, I parallel that to taking the morning after pill. You know, you engage in risky behavior, take the morning after pill, you must take it within a certain time frame in order for it to be effective. You don't have to worry about getting pregnant. With PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis, take it within a certain time frame, that 72 hour or three day time frame, and you, it significantly reduces the chance of, chances of you contracting HIV. Um, so again, thank you for tuning in to this brief explanation on PEP versus PrEP and how PEP can be an effective tool in the event that you are a victim of sexual assault or uh, sexual violence or rape. Um, again, my name is Kayla King and I'm the Linkage Coordinator at Mazzoni Center located in Philadelphia. So I actually work with HIV positive persons every day working uh, to connect them to HIV care. So if you have any questions after this presentation about PEP and PrEP, um, if you're currently living with HIV, you have any questions or concerns about getting linked to medical care, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Again, I work at Mazzoni Center um, my email address is kking at mazonicenter.org. You can either call or text me at 267-817-8404. Take care.